Today we're going to discuss the factor and the remainder theorems. We've already divided polynomials using long division and synthetic division, and this idea kind of taps in on that a little bit. We know that if we divide a number like 3 by 2, we get the answer of 1 and a half, which means 2 times 1 and a half gets you 3. Um, as the division algorithm states, we know that if we divide two terms, we get an answer with some kind of a remainder. And what we're going to talk about today is the fact that if we were to take and do long division on this term, we would get some divisible answer and a, a remainder. Likewise, we could do the same thing here using synthetic division and get our answer again. Now, in this case, rather than doing the long division, I'm going to take and do this synthetically, so I'll have the number 1. And then list the coefficients of 3, 0, negative 7, and 1, 0, and negative 7. Throw those down. Bring the 3 down. Multiply. Get 3. Add 3. Multiply 3. Add negative 4. Multiply negative 4. Add negative 3. Multiply negative 3. Add negative 3. Multiply once again. Get a negative 3. And get negative 10 as my remainder. Now, what this rule states is that if I take and were to divide by some x minus c term, then my remainder, this is the remainder theorem, is the same as calculating f of c. So in this case, my c value is 1. And if I were to take f of 1 in this case and plug it in, you'll notice I get 3 times 1 to the fifth minus 7 times 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 7. That's equal to 3 minus 7 plus 1 minus 7. Or in this case, a total of negative 10. So rather than doing this whole synthetic division, I can just take and plug in my divisor to f of x and get my remainder. So let's do the same thing here. We want to find out the remainder using the remainder theorem. We need to find c in each case. c is negative 2 in this case. So if I go f of negative 2, I get 5 negative 2 cubed plus 6 times negative cubed 2 plus 8. This gets me negative 40, negative 12, and 8. <laughs> So I have negative 52 plus 8, which is going to equal negative 46, and that's my remainder. In this case, our C value is equal to 2. So I take F of 2, which gets me negative quantity of 2 to the 4th plus 4 times 2 cubed, minus 4 times 2 squared, or negative 16, plus 32, minus 16, which is 0. So x minus 2 would be a factor of this term. So. Now we're going to take and find f of 4 using synthetic substitution. Well, synthetic substitution is the same as synthetic division, so we list our coefficients. Negative 3, 12, and negative 10. Throw my 4 here, do this synthetically. Pull my negative 3 down. We get negative 12, 0, 0. And negative 10, so that's a remainder. Okay, and we could find the remainder again by just substituting straight in, find f of 4, 
and show that it gets the same quantity, 3 times 4 squared plus 12 times 4 minus 10 is equal to negative 48 plus 48 minus 10, which is negative 10. And we get the same thing whether we're using synthetic substitution or we're using the remainder theorem. So in this example, they tell us x minus 2 is a factor of the polynomial. And we want to find all the remaining factors. Well, if I have one factor and divide it in, I know that my remainder is 0. And then I can find out what's left. And then if that's factorable, find my other factors. So let's do that. I have a c value of 2. I'm going to go synthetic division. And get a 1, a 2, negative 5, negative 6. Remember, we should get 0 as our remainder. So in this case, that's exactly what we get. And we have a remaining factor. Remember, we have our constant term, our x to the first term, and our x squared term of x squared plus 4x plus 3. This is also a factor. And I can go ahead and factor that out to x plus 3 and x plus 1. So my factors for this polynomial are x plus 3, x plus 1, and our initial x minus 2. And if I multiplied all that out, I would get this polynomial left. Let's do one more. Again, x minus 4 is a factor. We're going to divide that in using synthetic division. You'll notice in this case, we have a placeholder of 0 for my x to the first term. Bring the 1 down, multiply, get 4, negative 2, negative 8, and negative 32, thus giving me 0. And I have x squared minus 2x minus 8 left. Therefore, that's x minus 4, x plus 2. And again, we had an x minus 4 already. So I would get a quantity of x minus 4 squared times x plus 2 as my remaining factors. And that's all we've got. Make sure you do your connect ed, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.